Hello and welcome to Clock Spinning, the podcast of Magic's history as told card by card. I'm Austin and with me as always is my co-host Connor. How are you today, Connor? I'm doing pretty good. Been uh, kind of skimming through these uh, Lord of the Rings spoilers and uh, kind of pleasantly surprised. Tell me more. What what are you pleasantly surprised by? Why why is it a surprise? Let's start there. Um okay. I I'm still not very interested <laughs> in this set uh because i i mostly play standard and it's obviously not standard legal the i don't know a lot of the cards were kind of cool and interesting and i don't know that much about lord of the rings or the the lore but it it seemed like they were generally kind of a good fit for what these characters are supposed to be like or be doing i like some of the the themes throughout like food tokens is kind of fun i like that a mass is back but with orcs so some cool stuff yeah, I have very mixed feelings. So when they announced it, I, I really hated it because I still don't really like other properties in my magic universe. It just it just disrupts the game for me or it, it misses out on something I really love about the game. And I also feel like Lord of the Rings is an awkward fit because Lord of the Rings is about sort of a binary battle of good and evil and magic is about five amoral colors. And I feel like that's really awkward. And I still sort of feel like that looking at the spoiler. I, I think they... they Threaded that needle pretty well, but it still feels a little awkward to me. What I do like is, apart from a few clunkers that are just like, scry two, draw four, exile one, I'm making these up, but you know, like super clunky. There's a lot of kind of simple, clean cards in here, Connor. Like not every card draws cards or gives you card advantage or does something on its own. Like, I feel like it's a little bit of a traditional magic set. Am I, am I crazy? Is that just wishful thinking? Uh, I mean, I think the real wishful thinking that I'm feeling is wondering if this is heralding a return to that a little bit when we go back to Eldraine and Ixalan, but that's probably too much to hope for. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a huge hater of Modern Magic, but I do feel like, I mean, I keep trying to play Standard. I, I, it's probably better now that Fable and its uh, evil companions have been banned, but like, <laughs> it's just so... like. Even with those band like Wedding Announcement and Wandering Emperor, like so many cards just do everything now that it, it really yep. makes the game pretty boring and samey to me. And I feel like I look at these cards and a lot of them are asking me to do some work. Like they're asking me to cast another spell to get value. They don't do things just completely on their own. Uh, there are vanilla creatures in the set, Connor. Like, I, I don't know that this is all kind of exciting for me. Yeah, the, the vanilla creature is pretty, pretty mind blowing. That's like the, the most surprising reveal. There, there are multiple vanilla creatures in here, Connor. Really? Yeah, I there's, haven't, uh, I haven't there's, there's at least everything. two. Wow. There's a, there's a 2W32, and there's a 1R22, and maybe maybe there's some others. Those are the two I've, I've spotted so far. Wow. Okay, we, we got to move off of this because we are not a current events podcast. But I will also say, as a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan, the ring tempting you being all good stuff still feels really, really str- strange to me. Uh, I don't don't like that mechanic at all. It's like this venture into the dungeon, like outside knowledge required kind of thing that just like, I I don't want that in a game. Yep. I know Mark Rosewater talked about it on his blog that they tested something else and players don't like downside mechanics and fine, I I get that. But like, I don't know, they've had them. Echo was there, cumulative upkeep was there. I mean, these aren't beloved mechanics, but I feel like something in the ring, like, I don't know, there, there should be some negative effect from getting too tempted by the ring of Sauron. Having having spent time on hundreds of Kamigawa cards, mm. I think it's safe to say that clock spinning does like a downside. <laughs> I love it. All right, that's a, that's a good segue. Masterfully done. What is our topic for today? It's not Kamigawa. What is it, Connor? Uh, no, it's it's um, close to a vanilla creature in the form of a spell. Uh, mm. It's Lightning Bolt. We're doing another art review uh, in the vein of our Counterspell and Dark Ritual art reviews. Um, but today, looking at every unique printing of lightning bolt that there has ever been yeah i'm uh i'm really excited for this one we've been having a lot of fun with these art reviews uh for anyone who's not familiar we've been rating these on the classic youtuber s to f scale where s is like best ever the b's knees better than anything else unbelievable and then a b c d e f if you're new to the show uh we do two basic things on here we talk about weird topics where we review random cards and we're going card by card through the original Kamigawa block and building a cube. This episode is very art dependent. So if you're listening to the podcast, uh, tap the link down in your show notes, or you can go to our YouTube channel where we'll throw up an image of each card as we talk about it, because this is all about art. So <laughs> it's, it's going to help to see the art. We're not going to try to describe them because uh, it would be tedious. Uh, it'd also be kind of difficult with just a whole bunch of lightning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're already kind of prefiguring a challenge I think we're finding with for artists doing lightning bolt. Should we dive in, Connor? Let's do it. All 
All right. Well, first up, we have the OG lightning bolt, Christopher Rush's piece from Alpha. This is the first bolt. This was actually the only bolt for an astonishingly long period of time. So this card is printed in, what, 1993? There is no other art for lightning bolt until 2010 when it's reprinted in M10. So for 16 or 17 years, this was it. So in that time, there were 15 printings, not including Gold Border. But I think because Bolt was very quickly realized to be too powerful, it didn't get any new art, right? Like a lot of the previous cards we talked about, like Dark Ritual and Counterspell, showed up in uh, more core sets. They showed up in Ice Age. But by the time we hit even Ice Age, I think Wizards realized like, Bolt is Bolt is a problem. Bolt is too good. Uh, and so this uh, only got three real printings, this art, Alpha, 3rd Edition, and 4th Edition. And so this was it. This is the iconic bolt. Maybe? But honestly, I got to say, like, the art here is, like, it's pretty all right, Connor, right? Like, it's it's just a lightning bolt. It's a nicely realized for the time depiction of a lightning bolt. I don't get any sense that this is striking a creature, to be honest, or even particularly magical. It's just like a painting of lightning. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit afraid to criticize anything by Christopher Rush. Not, not <laughs> because he's scared. a frightening person, but because he has also uh, brought us art for some of the other most iconic cards in the game a card called black lotus if you're familiar oh, with it oh yeah he did that one huh brainstorm chronotog which i love goblin grenade which i also love tormod's crypt just to name a few so are you just buttering him up because you're about to critique this card <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just i just tried to get christopher on my good side but yeah i just i'm not feeling this one that much it's just kind of some lightning uh happening in a, a valley yeah. What is uh, what is your rating on this? I think we can get that out of the way. I'm a B, which is to say like for a piece of alpha art, this is totally fine, but I can't say it doesn't move me compared to a lot of iconic alpha pieces. It's just kind of there. It's nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm also a B, but I think a part of the reason it's not lower than that for me is because of the original alpha frame here. This is a little oh, bit like Dark so Ritual cool. where it has this, this like old spell book kind of energy to it. But unlike Dark Ritual, this one just doesn't excite me very much. Uh, one thing that does excite me just as a magic rules nerd or rules text nerd is the text on this original alpha printing is lightning bolt does three damage to one target. And what I love about that is that's that's pretty close to the oracle wording today, right? We've circled all the way back around to this one target thing after years of target creature or planeswalker, target creature or player, or sorry, target creature or player, and then the redirect rule and all that. And now we're just back to any target. And so I, I like that little bit of, of symmetry there. Yeah, I guess there's really only two words that would change or that have changed just does to deals and one to any, right? Yep. And we did not get back to that text until uh, like, what, 2019? <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I don't have much more to say about this one. I think it's it's fine. Uh, it's not it's not the greatest piece of bolt art, though. It's it's like a B. Yeah, it's it's a, a B bolt. <laughs> it's a B bolt. I mean, the other thing I'll say, actually, I do have more to say is that some of these early magic pieces, even when they're not amazing technically, are like fun and quirky, like our counterspell uh, alpha. This isn't really that, though. This is just like there. I think this is something we'll uh, talk about quite a bit on this episode. But I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine what else a lightning bolt might be, right? <laughs> Other than a bunch of lightning. I, I don't want to spoil where we're going here. But um, one thing I took away from this is it is a lot harder to make a really cool lightning bolt than um, a dark ritual or counter spell. Like I, I don't, we should try to understand why as we go through this, but I feel like these, none of these hit as hard for me as some of the best counter spells and rituals. Yeah. Okay. So we'll call it a, a B bolt to start out with B bolt. All right. So our second lightning bolt here comes from 2010. So, Almost a full two decades after the original bolt. We've gone all the way from the oldest of old borders to uh, the 2010 border here. And I have to think that this art is actually kind of the quintessential bolt for most people. Oh, Connor, can you say the artist? Oh, I'm sorry. Christopher Moeller. So another Christopher. I think that this, this art for me is the one that comes to mind when someone says lightning bolt. I can't really say exactly why that is. Maybe it's just this is the bolt that I've seen the most in, in YouTube videos of people actually playing the game. This, I feel like, is the bolt you'd see the most in in Modern or on Magic Online. The red lightning here, I think, especially kind of defines what lightning bolt looks like for me. Yeah, I think of this as like the bolt art. I mean, to a large extent, it was, right? Like after this, we get one more promo printing also in 2010. And then we don't get another new art until I believe 2019. And so like for the first, whatever that is, like 
27 years of Magic's history, there were two arts for uh, this extremely famous card, which is totally wild to me. That said, I think this piece is uh, stands up, not just on the basis. It may be that it's just imprinted in my brain, as you're saying, but I, I don't think it's just that. I think I think this piece works on a number of levels. I really like the small figure on the right contrasted with the huge bolt. Like it gives me a real feeling of power um, and of like kind of calling down power from the heavens in this really clear way. Um, and it makes me as the spellcaster seem powerful. We're going to talk about this with the next one, but I, something about this, like I, I can insert myself into it and feel like I'm controlling like natural forces. Yeah. I just, I don't know. This is like, it's a kind of cryptic pulp fantasy, like intensity to this thing. I really dig. Yeah. I, I feel like there's kind of a two categories of bolt that we're going to see today. You have the, the really abstract Christopher Rush style of Bolt, where it's just sort of like a, a phenomenon happening, and you're observing it. And then there's other Bolts like this, where there's very clearly someone calling this down on someone or something else in, you know, as you're saying, a way that makes you feel powerful casting uh, the spell. I love that. And I'd even go further to say, I think this one straddles a line, because like the next one or some of the upcoming ones, to me, are very fantastical. And this one's like kind of just like it's still a natural phenomena. It's just one that you're in control of. I don't know. This, this is a banger. Oh, I uh, I forgot the flavor text on this because this is uh, actually one of the few lightning bolts that we'll see today that actually has flavor text. It says the spark mage shrieked, calling on the rage of the storms of his youth. To his surprise, the sky responded with a fierce energy he'd never thought to see again. I love that this flavor text could be very easily read as a reference to Lightning Bolt coming back and being reprinted so many years later and, and coming back into standard, no less, uh, in M10. But it's also just like wonderful, cool flavor text on its own. And I, I love that kind of ambiguity to it. Yeah, I uh, this might be my favorite flavor text in the entire game. Um, like I, I love the way it breaks the fourth wall a little bit, as you're saying, but not in the like I want a banana this big way, which you know is a classic bit of Odyssey flavor text. Like it's not silly, it's not jokey, but it, it's like acknowledging the player's potential nostalgic reaction of like, oh my god, did you see they brought lightning bolt back? Which was totally the reaction um, everywhere. It was like I can't believe they put bolt in standard. You know, this is unbelievable. Uh, it's it's such a great marriage of uh, it's I, it's something you can only do in Magic, right? There's no other. Almost no other thing I could think of that where like something that's just like basically introducing a new piece of cardboard in the world could like call back all these nostalgic memories and give you this feeling of power and potential of possible. I'm rambling here, but I just I, I love this flavor text. It's so good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's true, though. You know, there's there's sort of a whole story arc to the game, not just the like the literal flavor lore story, but. You know, a game like this that's been going for three decades now, you know, there's so much beauty to a game that's able to evolve over time and have a community that is, you know, following along with it. Connor, I, I think you may have just distilled, like, why we do this podcast. <laughs> that, that is clock spinning in a nutshell right there. <laughs> we we went deep here. All right, so what's your rating on this, uh, on this bad boy? <sighs> okay, so I have this as an A. Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm wondering if I should errata my own rating up to an S right now because, spoiler alert, I may or may not have any S ratings for any future <laughs> bolts, and I feel like I need to have at least one. Um, so maybe I will just call this an S. All right. I am also an S on this thing. I, in case you couldn't tell from the glee in my voice, I love this piece. I love the flavor text. I love the way this whole thing comes together. It's just a great, iconic piece of magic. All right, S. All right, let's move on to uh, Veronique Mignard. Connor, you know French a little more. Do I, any any hope there? I th I think that that's pretty pretty good. Veronique Mignol. Okay, let's just present, pretend I said that. That sounded super French. Uh, <laughs> from uh, Magic Player Rewards, uh, twenty ten. Uh, so this piece, uh, I'll just get my rating out of the start. I'm like a C for me. I I've been alluding to this over the last couple of cards. This card is like too wizardly for me. Like, I think the art is very well done. It's very technically well executed. I love the super rich, uh, dramatic background. I love the use of color, the kind of intense lighting. But like, uh, like the grasping fingers, like just the whole thing of it is just too extreme. And it, it just kind of falls off for me. Like, I, I like the lightning bolt as a natural phenomena that I see in the first two. Uh, and uh, it's just not working for me. I feel like I want to like this one, but it, there's yes. there's just these these few things about it that really bother me. The first one, and the one that bothers me the most, this is not the artist's fault, 
but I guess we're still going to hold it against her anyway, is this horrible oval frame. Yes, it's so bad. It is so nasty, like the this ugly red background that just kind of, you know, goes unnoticed in any other magic card stands out so much here it, t- to me more than the art itself. Like, I just can't stop looking at this pretty gross background. It's not like a full art card. It's like a full frame card or something. Yeah, it's like there's you get just these these horrible like corners of red frame and then like a little kind of oval of art in the middle. Yeah, it's super awkward. It's kind of like the uh, like the old tokens, right? Like the it's the literally first tokens the old tokens, which like is this. actually confusing. Not just ugly, but confusing. Yeah, well, this is your lightning bolt token. No, this is the this is the like token design from. I'll link this in the show notes. Like the 2003 tokens are super super 2003 to 2014 are super super similar to this. Um, and it, it just looks really confusing and awkward. I also don't like. There's something about the bevel around the oval. This is, I'm getting super nitpicky, but there's something about the bevel around this oval that kind of makes the art look like it's floating on top of the frame instead of that I'm peering through the frame into the art. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's, huh. it's backwards to me. It's like a little painting sitting on top of the card. This, this may be like a, a brain test situation, like whether you see two faces or a vase, mm-hmm, because to me, mm-hmm. it does look like you're looking through the frame at the art. I just wish the frame was not something I had to look through. Do you do you see two faces or a vase, Connor? Um, I see I see uh, all of the above. Like, and well, like gigantic default, can. which do you see? You don't oh, see both oh, ones. Oh, it just you mean the actual faces? I'm talking about the actual optical illusion. Two faces or the vase? Which do you oh, see? That's a good. I feel like I need to have it thrown up in front of me right now. I can do that. Hold on. Let's do it. So we're looking at the same one. This is this is riveting content. I'll put this in the show notes. I just tried to Google two two vases, and that's the opposite hmm. of what you're supposed. It's not to do. quite it. Okay, definitely faces. Oh, wow. I definitely vases. Whoa. Vaz. Well, there's something to break down there. Whew, okay. All right, anyway, you had other objections. Yeah, to this anyway, that's, that's the first thing uh, that I don't like. The second thing, I can't tell if this, is, if this art is supposed to be showing a person, you know, presumably a wizard, being struck by a lightning bolt from this god-sized mm-hmm. hand in the sky, or if the wizard mm-hmm. is calling down the lightning from mm-hmm. this god hand onto something else. Mm-hmm. Or what? Like what? What is happening here? Who is being struck by what lightning and what? <laughs> is it even a person? Is it a giant rabbit? I don't know. I, I did. What did I say for this? I said C. I'm downgrading. This is a D for me, even though I think it's very technically Ooh. skilled. I just don't like it. Live downgrade. This this is a C for me because I I think that the hand does look you know kind of badass. The lightning is really well done. The color is really cool. But to get to my third objection, the scale of this feels all wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. What What is with the trees versus the figure, for example? Yeah. What's going on there? Yeah. And, and you've got the sky kind of like angling downward toward the horizon and the ground angling upward, which, you know, of course, it is what like the sky and earth do. But the, the angles of both of those are kind of <laughs> too extreme here. Mm-hmm. Like the, the earth is rising too fast. The sky is going down toward the horizon too fast. The bolt doesn't really look like it's striking anything. It's like going through the wizard and then kind of just exploding on the ground. So I also feel bad giving this a D, but I want I want to pitch D. It doesn't matter if we agree on rating for this show, but I I think this artist is very technically skilled. Like I'm looking at her other pieces. There's a bunch of really cool stuff. Like she did a bunch of the, um, uh, what are they called? The uh, expeditions from Zendikar on fetches. They're all awesome. But I, I had a friend once tell me like that they try to look at art sometimes through a purely aesthetic lens. Like they try not to think about it or analyze it. They try to just experience it. And if I just experience this unintermediated by like how I think I should feel, it's kind of a D for me. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't hit. I don't know why. <laughs> you just, you experience it as a D and that's fine. I exactly, I experience it as just a D. That's all that's in my brain. It's just a giant letter D. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling a C. All right. All right. Let's move on to what is actually a full art lightning bolt instead of a full frame <laughs> lightning bolt. Uh, this is a piece by Kekai Kotaki from Magic Fest 2019. And I probably should have found out what that was before launching into this. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll look into it while you... I have no idea too. I'll try to find it. All right, perfect. I'll, I'll just vamp and keep talking as long as I can here. So this lightning bolt is from 2019. The last one we saw was 2010. So we're jumping forward another nine years before we get another printing of Bolt, which is just mind-boggling to me. Like, I, I'm i shocked that there was never a Bolt printed into some kind of commander deck or some anthology or modern masters or, like, 
nothing. There's no bolt between 2010 and 2019, as even as Commander is becoming you know, this massively popular format. And in fact, we didn't see any EDH-specific bolt printed until last year, 2022, within the lifespan of this show, which is just wild to me. It is pretty wild. Um, so Austin, what is Magic Fest? Yeah, okay. <laughs> How did you know I was ready to say? Magic <laughs> Fest was Wizards' abortive rebranding of Grand Prix into a larger event, which they oh. announced in 2019. You know, this was when Wizards was like, magic is going to be an eSport. Magic is, you know, competitive magic is going to be bigger than ever. Da, da, da. And then, you know, COVID happened and Wizards kind of forgot about competitive magic uh, for three years. Uh, so that, that was Magic Fest. This was some kind of promo for basically a super Grand Prix. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, it is it, it is strange that um, uh, Wizards didn't... I, I think it just shows Wizards didn't really go in for the promo thing that much until very recently. Like, I think it's really with Secret Lair that Wizards said, hold on. We can just put new art on these things and we'll just keep we'll just keep selling them. The players will just keep buying over and over and over. And until then, I think I wonder if Wizards it's fair to say Wizards thought of art new art as like a cost. You know what I mean? Like we've already got two good lightning bolts. We're just throwing this into like commander decks or whatever anyway, where no one's gonna care uh what art we use. So why would we? And I think it's only when Wizards realized they could like separately monetize just the idea of new art that uh they started investing so heavily in in art. Hmm. That's a, it's, it's a good theory. Yeah. But I do like this art quite a bit. It Yeah, why do you like it? Well, it has a, it has a wizard flying in the sky, like the last art, but this this one feels much more effective to me. Uh there is actually a sense of scale. Um here we have kind of a humanoid wizard floating up in the clouds calling down the lightning on demon or a minotaur. Kind of unclear because mm-hmm. it's getting completely fried by this giant lightning bolt. But it it really creates this this very powerful scene with this volcanic eruption happening in the background and these like clouds crackling with static that's being channeled by this wizard down onto the minotaur. We don't know anything about the wizard or the minotaur that's being completely evaporated here, uh, but we don't need to to feel this kind of apocalyptic power that's happening in this scene. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, I, I really like this. I'm a solid B on it. Like It's not all the way to A or S for me, but even though this is super magical and I just critiqued the last one for being too magical, like I think there's a few things that set this apart. Um, one is just what you're talking about, like the technical execution of the piece is incredible. I would also add to that, like this demon's pretty badass looking. It got lucky with the better frame, but also there's a really clear narrative here and I appreciate that. <laughs> like it's not, uh, it's not all muddled like some of the previous ones. I can tell exactly what's going on and I appreciate that. I'm a simple man. It's nice. It's also perfectly suited for like this full art, uh, format right Mm -hmm. like it's it's a very vertical piece of art which feels right for a lightning bolt and it's really like using every square inch of the real estate very well it's interesting you mentioned that vertical feels right for a lightning bolt because i think you're totally right and a lot of the ones we're going to look at from here are vertical uh which does does work better so what's your rating i'm i'm a b um i'm gonna give this one an a i really like it wow all right Okay, now we come to just, just I think it's fair to say, a slew of secret layer drop um, arts. Uh, this first one is by Noah Bradley. This is, I think, Connor, you said there's four of these, right? This is from a, a secret layer drop that was entirely bolts. Yes. Yeah, it's four, it's four lightning bolts. The, the name of the drop is Mountain Go. <laughs> I love Which that. Going back to the idea of like what you instinctively like versus what you feel you should like, like on paper, this checks a lot of boxes for me. Like it's painterly, it's abstract, um, it's got a kind of epic scope. It uses unusual colors, which I really like. I like when magic cards aren't just like red, red line, red frame, but I just don't like it. I, I don't really like it at all. For me, this is just like way too formal. It's like very formal in structure, like with these very clear horizontal lines, the big circle in the center, these mountains that couldn't exist anywhere in real life. But it's not like, it's not using that formality to do anything very interesting. Like it reminds me a lot of William Blake, but William Blake is using that to like kind of tell a story actually to create like a whole mythology and theology. This is just like, I don't know. It's just something sort of vapid about it. I don't know. It just doesn't work for me, Connor. I don't, I don't know. I, I like this one. There's something about the scale of this feel like it, it feels like a massive spell that's being cast, probably much bigger than, you know, the one mana <laughs> lightning bolt. Uh, so maybe not the greatest fit there, but there's there's something very epic about this art that resonates with me. And actually, I, I was looking at Noah Bradley's other pieces that he's done, and he it seems like he kind of specializes in this kind of big 
epic art, just as kind of a sampler he's done. Approach of the Second Sun, Behold the Beyond, Commence the Endgame, all of the legendary sorceries from Dominaria. So, I mean, even mm-hmm. just the names of those spells are epic and the art matches. So I, I, I like this this kind of sense of, of massive scale here. It works for me. I don't feel like I kind of like need to have a coherent story being told by the lightning bolt. I just want to see like <laughs> big lightning, big flashy sort of lighting being rendered. Yeah. It's a good note that it is a signature of his doing these kind of big, uh, kind of epic scale things. And I, I do like the abstraction here. I, I don't know. It's just not, it's not working for me. So you're all the way up at A? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd call it an A. All right. I'm a C. I don't think I ever said I'm a C. It's not bad. It's just not my fave. All right. That's fair. Okay. Uh, next card is card two of four from the Secret Lair Drop. Uh, this one is by uh, Bridget Roca. I hope I'm saying that right. And it's basically showing a uh, bolt hitting a bear. I really love that this one kind of channels the lightning bolt in this totally different style. Uh, you have the the signature red lightning bolt, um, but it's contrasting in this really nice way with the you know dark night sky in the background, these cool blue surroundings, uh, and then this this bear in the center of the frame getting hit by the bolt. Yeah, I really, uh, I really dig this one as well. Like, I like how whimsical it is. There's all these little funny details packed into the art. Not funny in like a humorous sense, but funny in the sense like, oh, there's like mushrooms and little bits of line work and little, are they faces? Are they not faces? Like, I love how detail packed this thing is. And I love like, I, I love how kind of dark it is too. Like, this is a very, very dark piece for magic. Dark, like in terms of actual colors. Yeah, it's like dark. It's like black is kind of the core like canvas for this piece. And then there's sort of light pastel, almost pastels like popping all over it. I I don't know. It really, it really looks cool. I do feel genuinely bad for this bear though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, should you? Because one of the, so the one flying the ointment for me on this is like, is the bear getting killed by this lightning bolt? Because it almost could be getting powered up. Like to me, it's pretty ambiguous what's happening to this bear. It it does kind of look, like the bear is being like zombified by the lightning bolt or something. <laughs> like, like it's, yeah, it's a, like a Frankenstein a moment. Yeah. Franken bear. Here's the heuristic. Like if you did not know what the card does, could you from just the art sort of roughly guess at it? And I, I don't know that I could. It doesn't give the strongest sense that it's dealing damage. I, I have kind of the same objection I'm realizing to the uh, Noah Bradley art. Like again, in that one, it's like, is that lone figure? Like that lone figure almost feels like a, a story in a, pulp fantasy or a hero in a pulp fantasy novel or something like this one it's just not uh it's not quite clicking for me yeah i i I should say the art is totally clicking i love the art from a like magic narrative standpoint it doesn't it's not quite a mechanical time it's not the neat kind of mechanical interlock that i like yeah i guess the bear should be (laughs) getting blown (laughs) (laughs) on fire (laughs) yeah it could be howling in pain from the would would the bear being on fire communicate that better I'm not sure it would. <laughs> I'm not sure it would. Uh, then it just kind of looks like the bear's gone, you know, Super Saiyan or whatever. <laughs> I really like this artist, uh, artist style. She's done just a handful of other pieces for magic since then, which is great to see. I really do, as much as I complain about modern, modern magic, like I did in the intro, I do love the diversity of art styles. And I love that they gave, brought this particular artist in. Like this is, um, I don't know, like a kind of past, her style in general, I'll link to her website as a sort of pastel kind of fairy tale. I don't know. I don't know what it's, it makes me think of like indie music from the early 2010s for some reason. Like it's just, it really, it's really beautiful and, and fun to look at and, and sort of peaceful. Yeah. Even and, when a bear is being bolted. <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe being powered up. Uh, so I'm a B on this thing, by the way. Uh, this, was, this one's an A for me. I it's almost calming in a weird way with this night sky in the background. and It's, a, it's serene. Yeah, it is. What would it take to get you to ask, Connor? Hmm. I feel like some, just something's got to change with the bear. I also genuinely wish that uh, with all of these secret layers, there just wasn't any text box. Hmm. They, they all have full art, like top to bottom, right? We saw with the previous two, like full art bolt printings from 2010 and 2019 that like you don't absolutely need to have the text on there. Most players are going to know what lightning bolt does. Hmm. So to me, it sort of feels like if there's if there's any card that we could drop the text from safely, it would be lightning bolt. Or you could just pull the word instant down and like center it above the text and have. I think the real objection to me, the text isn't the problem. It's this like these two red lines. 
Yeah, actually, that's that is kind of the most jarring part of this. Okay, next up we have uh, Robbie Trevino's contribution to the secret layer drop, and um, I think it's a little bit telling for my feelings about this that I skipped over it while putting comments in and forgot to come back to it. There's just <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> this is just I like was wondering. I, I kind of forgot. Like this is just like a comic book depiction of a lightning bolt, and I have uh, honestly. I, I'm already getting a little bit of lightning bolt palette fatigue here. And this one, I kind of think is where that started to set in for me of like, yep, it's a dragon. It's getting hit by lightning bolt. That's, that's what's happening. Although I do like, okay, now that I'm looking at it again, I do like, if you look at closely at the clouds, there's a suggestion of a hand kind of at the center of the bolt, but it's, it's pretty ambiguous. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. So props oh, yeah. for that, Robbie, but overall kind of a meh for me. This is like a, just a C. Yeah, I'm glad you said comic book because my immediate impression from this was it's a, a panel in a graphic novel that I would just kind of look at and say, oh, the, the dragon's getting hit by a lightning and then turn the page. Yeah, exactly. Amongst 400 other panels, right? None of them are meant to be that special. Yeah, yeah. You know, that like in a graphic novel, if it's, you know, assuming it's what you like, you enjoy the art style, at least for me, there's, you know, a lot of panels where I'll kind of linger and, you, you know, you appreciate the details and there's a lot of cool stuff that you want to keep looking at. This one, I think I just move right on through. I don't know. It's just, just to see for me. It's not bad, but I don't know. One of the filters we've applied to this is like, which lightning bolt would you run in your cube? Uh, and this is, I don't know, maybe the lowest down the list for me, even lower than ones I ranked lower because it just doesn't, it doesn't provoke any reaction in me. Yeah, let's uh, let's just keep moving. I'll, I'll give this a C as well. Nothing to love, nothing to hate. All right. Okay, this next one's a little more exciting. This is uh, by Alexis Zirit and is undeniably the most metal lightning bolt in today's episode. <laughs> I love this thing. To me, this this looks like something that would be painted on a pizza box mounted to the wall of one of those pizza places that serves like, <laughs> like vegan pizzas by the slice, and they play really loud death metal. They probably have a lot of IPAs on tap. Uh, <laughs> they have this on a pizza box up on the wall. You're just raking this up for me continually. <laughs> you might have to change your rating. I, I might. I might have to change my rating because I have this at a B, and I don't, I don't really know why. Yeah, I love this one. It's just so, it's so incredibly over the top. Uh, I don't even have any like affinity for metal, but I do like this aesthetic. Like this aesthetic is just so exaggerated. It's so kind of pulpy, like Conan the Barbarian, just like tense emotion and grittiness conveyed in every line. I, I really like that. Um, it looks like that's what this artist basically does. He uh, does like comics. He's done art for various metal bands, including pretty well-known bands like Slayer. Um, he does ads or like the packaging for that liquid death water. Just lots and lots of stuff. He's also done a handful of magic cards, including a Gideon Ally of Zendikar all link, which is the only printing of Gideon Ally of Zendikar and actually maybe the only Gideon art ever that doesn't look totally derpy. Like I feel like Gideon always looks totally dorky to me. And this is like to not to make Gideon not dorky is an incredible, incredible achievement. So hats off uh, to this artist for that. That's a that's a pretty good Gideon. Maybe we need to do a, a Gideon art review. Oh my god, I'm adding it right now. <laughs> Just every <laughs> every Gideon card that's ever How been. How do printed. I do a Scryfall search for U Gideon unique art? I'll work on this. Yeah, that's definitely going in the back. <laughs> wow. Wow. Gideon's triumph's got to be near the top of that. One. I won't need. No, no. I was thinking just all the Gideon planeswalkers. Uh, I think I think we could throw in uh, some of the Gideon adjacent cards too. Yeah, like the 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 awful rest in peace where he's like the center of a uh, ring of uh, column. Oh, anyway, all right, yeah. not, this isn't the Gideon yeah, episode, we, but the Gideon episode is probably coming. It's in the works. Once once we figure out the Scryfall search for art includes Gideon. Then, oh, that uh, that's easy. But I already have I, just Gideons, just like unique art Gideon planeswalkers. There's 17, which is the perfect number for an episode. Just saying. That, that's a good number. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Anyway. I didn't mean to turn this into the Gideon cast because <laughs> no, I don't even like Gideon. <laughs> but this car, this art rocks, right, Connor? Yes. Get away from Gideon. There's there's just so much cool stuff to see in this one. You've got this skull up in the clouds, which has sort of a, if you look closely, a hand underneath the skull casting the lightning down on uh, this poor devil mage kind of guy. I love that the target of the lightning bolt, their skeleton is like showing through in this kind of classic cartoon sort of way. Um, which amazingly no other lightning bolt that we're looking at today does like that seems so like such a gimme. <laughs> no, you know, no one else went for having this, the skeleton like showing through like this. 
Maybe Watsy just won't let him. They're like, that's too corny, but you can do it in the secret layer, heavy metal secret layer thing. Yeah, uh, let, let the heavy metal artist do it. No one else is allowed. Yeah, he's got he's got a total like kind of Skeletor like ah kind of energy. Yeah, that that is exactly the sound that he's making. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'll get you. Yeah, I don't know. I I have this in a B. I'm not really sure why. I, can I go to S on this? Is what are you going, Connor? I'm going to follow you. Where I'm, where are we going? I'm going to go. I'm going to go up to A. As much as I okay. like love this art and and what it's doing and making me feel like I don't think I particularly enjoy like looking at it that much. <laughs> if that makes any sense, it does. But I, I might return to this when we get to the which one should go in the cube conversation at the end. Yeah, it's uh, it's a contender. All right, let's go to what is I think probably the busiest piece of lightning bolt art today, if nothing else. Uh, Anato Finstark's uh, Strixhaven Mystical Archive printing. So first off, for an artist who has like a super, super distinct style I'd never heard of, Anato has done a surprising number of cards, uh, 35 uh, cards in total. Their style varies a lot from like a kind of standard um, magic style and like Geist Light Snare up to like a kind of fairy tale, like Seb McKinney sheltering bows. And then this kind of like totally crazy, like abstract patchwork style that also shows up in, in other cards besides this one. Ah, this is another one where I feel like I want to like it, but there's just like so much going on in this art. Like just, just so many lines, so much details packed in here. And yet... Nothing in this art makes me think of a lightning bolt. Like there is no lightning bolt, except for, I guess, the little one just underneath the figure. It doesn't really look like a lightning bolt is being cast. Like to me, this looks like an impulse draw spell or something. It just doesn't look like bolt to me. Yeah, that's exactly it. There's so much going on in this art and so little of it is lightning. So what's your take here, Connor? I mean, this one is just not doing it for me, which is really like shocking to hear myself say that about almost any Mystical Archives printing. Uh, they're almost all great. And this this one's like very technically well done. And I, I love this style. But the fact that the lightning here is just confined to basically this one tiny little diamond shaped panel underneath the wizard. <laughs> it's like it's like one sixteenth of the art. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's like a circle around the wizard and then these sort of rays coming out from them that are like dividing the art into these different panels. And then it's, it's like the lightning. It was decided that the lightning only gets to be in one of those, one of the many panels that this art's been divided into. There's like as much moon in this art as there is lightning bolt. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. And, and far more mountains and clouds and just kind of like abstract color than there is lightning. Yeah. Is that a cloud above it? Is that like a bear, like an abstract bear? I don't know. I, really don't know yeah huh yeah there's just like a lot of clouds and mountains there's some kind of echoes of lightning in other parts of the circle but i wish the lightning was just kind of coming out in every direction like some of the counter spells that we looked at had you know a wizard at the center of this sort of like pulse of force coming out and some of those are really effective and i think that could have worked here as a different take on lightning bolt instead of just like a single streak of lightning coming down and striking something it could kind of be radiating out from the center yeah something we can't even see or striking something we can't even see yeah just sort of coming out from the wizard but here it's just (laughs) this tiny little corner Looking at the flavor text, I think it helps a teeny bit. So the flavor text here is, The first mages witness the fury of the raging storm and wish to answer back. The storm right texts. That's storm right, I think like someone who creates a storm, like a wheel right or something. I kind of like that as like, somehow it does lift the art a little bit for me because it's like, oh, okay, this is the depiction of like the first wizard to fully master the, the power of the storm and channel it into a lightning bolt. So that works a teeny bit, but I, I still want more bolt. Yeah, I I guess what I expect from Lightning Bolt is that it should just sort of be immediately recognizable as a Lightning Bolt in a way that I don't think I expected from Counterspell or Dark Ritual, which Mm -hmm. I I feel like could kind of be interpreted in a lot of different ways and still potentially be effective. Uh, But with a Lightning Bolt, like it's kind of all right there in the name. You got to have Lightning. It's got to be... a a bolt of it you need to be able to like discern that that's what's happening in the art and it's just not really coming together here yeah it's super it's super interesting i think before we started the series if you told me that a lightning bolt is kind of harder to make an effective piece around than like counterspell i don't think i would have uh i would have expected that Mm -mm. so i'm like I, i feel like i'm giving out all these flabby c's but this is another flabby c for me and that like i can't i can't go lower because i respect the execution too much but 
it just doesn't do it for me as as lightning bolt. Yeah, yeah, you've been going hard on the seas. I know. I promise. I'm I'm gonna leave the sea realm for I think the duration. This is my last sea. Okay, I'm gonna give this one a B because I I do like this style generally, and I do like a lot of this artist's other pieces, including the, the mystical archive ones. So I guess I'm giving bonus points for just the style generally, which I do really love. But just for in the context of this bolt, it's not not working for me. I kind of rebel against that because this is not the Anato Finstark episode, but that's fine. No, that's no, fine. no, no. I the effectiveness of this art as a lightning bolt, I think, is limited. But the the overall piece, if this was something other than a lightning bolt, like an impulse or something else, like you said, then I think I would like it more. All right, fine, I'll allow it. I'm not going to go up, but I understand where you're coming from, and I do really like this style and this artist. Okay, next up, uh, we have the Japanese uh, Mystical Archives Lightning Bolt by Ezoi. There is just so much going on here. I genuinely don't know where to start. So <laughs> in no particular order, I'll just say that I this is an A for me. The first thing that strikes me is the like prominence and oversimplification of this Lightning Bolt. Like Some of the bolts coming out of the wizard's hand are just like straight, literal straight lines. I love that the this wizard is clearly like frying some fool who apparently is just now nothing more than a skull. You've got all these like wonderful little details all throughout the art that uh, just make it really fun to look at. Uh, okay, I'll just get it right out there. This is an S for me. This is my other S of the episode. I love this art. I love how packed with detail it is. I love how busy it is. Like, I feel like I should object to its busyness, but for me, the bus busyness really works. Like, I think the way these very abstract lightning bolts kind of carry your eye from the skull in the bottom left up towards the spellcaster in the top right kind of makes this not busy, but instead detailed. Um, I love that we've got, like, I guess Mount Fuji, like, rearing up for some reason in the background. We've got this demon figure kind of hidden in ink. We got this mysterious skull. Like, I just love how packed with detail this is, how painterly this is, how just kind of over the top it is. Just a really, really cool piece. It also feels like you can, you know, I, I have no idea how this piece was actually created, but it feels like you can imagine the layers of this coming together, like this this yellow wash of the background and then the mountain being put up over that and then these dark, like pure black ink splashes going all over the canvas and this this Oni figure appearing at some point and then the the wizard and skull and lightning kind of showing up last. I love the the way that it it has these clear layers. And I'm noticing now actually if you look look at the text box, which is kind of translucent, you can see that it's actually a full skeleton that's being fried here, not just the skull. Oh my God, Connor, it's another guy who's being skeletonized by the lightning bolt he is a, like a cartoon i guess this one is even uh even more effective than the other lightning bolt because like everything but the skeleton is just gone already oh no i think it's his like like his flesh being boiled away is the black stuff oh boy this Ooh. is actually kind of disturbing grim very grim <laughs> the huh. wizard looks pretty friendly uh, yeah, no, th that's, this is one of the puzzling things about this, right? Is the wizard to me looks like a happy little butterfly. Mm -hmm. With some happy little, uh, spirited away style folded paper people floating around him and this red lantern, like, just looks like the wizard's going around spreading some cheer. <laughs> and, There's a lot of layers to this one. Yeah. On every, in every sense. Yeah. Is the black, so the black stuff is kind of, it looks to be kind of his flesh or his soul boiling away. Is the demon taking his flesh, his soul? You see how like the demon is kind of holding on to the black stuff or like capturing the blacks? Wow. Yeah, oh. it's sort of spiraling up from the skeleton into the the demon's hand kind of. Wow, this is, this is intense. I, I love that we can, we can read this much into the art though. You know, I feel like that really speaks volumes. Yeah, it's you. It's full of detail, and it's using all that detail to like tell a story or kind of invite you to tell a story in a way that I don't know that too many others of these have done. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. One other thing that has nothing to do with the the art here that I just thought was interesting is I, I'm amazed how long the rules text is. <laughs> like, I I don't know why it takes so much. Te well, I do know why it takes so much text in Japanese to convey this effect. It's because, as I understand it, the way Japanese does counting, you have to like kind of spell the whole thing out. So the text is something like deals three damage to one target creature or to one target planeswalker or to one target player. So it really has to spell a lot out. But it's still sort of amazing looking at it, just how much text is needed. Yeah, it really is noticeably longer than the, the English text we've been seeing. Cool, cool card. 
Okay, let's move on to, I think, our final secret layer drop of the episode. Hadoken. Wait, what? Yes, this is Hadoken, not Lightning Bolt. Uh, well, it's both. Um, this is by Jason. I know. This is by uh, Jason uh, Reinville, or Rainville, uh, again, for the Street Fighter secret layer drop, if you hadn't worked that out already. This one is like uh, a hard F for me, and I- I'm sorry to Jason because this had an uphill climb. I don't like crossover IP and magic, as I mentioned. Street Fighter in particular does like nothing for me and seems like a really bad fit for Magic's world and lore. And then the art itself, to be honest, is just like, whatever. Like, I don't know why we have this gigantic bell. Maybe that's some kind of Street Fighter in-joke I'm not getting. The like hands are so kind of formally posed. Um, Like the whole thing is just tyrannically symmetrical. Like I don't, there's really nothing about this I like. Like I just, I don't like this at all. (laughs) It's, uh, It's funny that you mentioned the Street Fighter stuff like does not resonate with you at all that you like don't like it being in magic uh i showed the chun li um street fighter card to my wife and it's basically the only magic card that she's ever seen that she had any any sort of reaction to not even just like a positive reaction just like just any sort of reaction at all she's like wow that's that's really cool you should get that oh no it's working wizard watsi is right they, they're they're We're drawing off. people in austin Okay, huh. This one does not really do anything for me. <laughs> it's it's fine. Like if I was into Street Fighter at all, really, I think this could be a very cool thing to have, but because I'm not, uh I just don't really care. But honestly, I feel like even if I was it's not that I hate Street Fighter, I'm like kind of it's fine. But I feel like even if I was a Street Fighter super fan, like this would be pretty meh for me. Unless the bell is like such an important Street Fighter reference. Like there's not a lot here for me as a Street Fighter fan. It's like we got Ryu's hands. Well, I think that's, I think Ryu's hands are the the fan part, right? Like <laughs> the fans are here for the hands. The fans are here for the hands for Ryu's hands doing the, you know, the Hadouken hands. <laughs> I have no idea what the, the bell is. I have to assume that it's, this is like some famous stage from one of the games. Oh, it's the final boss battle of Street Fighter, one of the Street Fighter 2 variants. Okay. Huh. Sure. It's not it's not raising my rating though. No. Nope. I'm I had this at a C. I'm actually gonna come down to a D because I just not just don't really really care. Yeah. It's it's really not even just the Street Fighter. I just think as a piece of art, it's pretty bland. Yeah. All right, we've got another uh bland one coming up here. This is <laughs> Arena Nord Souls lightning bolt from one second it has a a commander set symbol so i never know what it's from uh this is commander legends battle for Baldur's gate um so this is the first commander specific art that we have seen the first and the last and it's i i don't know how to describe this one because i again i just have like no feeling about this it's a, a big bolt of lightning it's there's definitely lightning there and it's uh definitely a bolt so it was a lightning bolt. Yeah, I feel like uh, this narrow town surrounded by water must again be like a like a Baldur's Gate thing that I don't know about. Is this is this Baldur's Gate that we're looking at? Isn't this isn't this Commander Legends Baldur's Gate? No, I mean, is this the gate? Oh, uh, honestly? I'm gonna go with probably not. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna out myself. I have I have no knowledge of Baldur's Gate besides that it's a D and D thing and that there was like. A pretty good CRPG based on it, I think. D and D thing. Okay, well, you got you got me beat. Yeah, this uh, this thing is just just as you're saying. There's not much to grab onto apart from the kind of cool setting of like the water and this narrow town and the like pretty well done lighting. I don't know the flavor text here. I'm gonna read the flavor text. Did you read it? I don't think so. I was this card is so hard to pay attention to. Yeah, I didn't didn't feel any need to read it. <laughs> All right, I'll read it just so I can explain why I don't like it. Uh, the flavor text is, hasn't she heard of knocking? Snurred, flaming fist guard. Guard, I don't know why I said it. Guard. 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 Uh, it's the most interesting thing about this card is how I said guard. That's just even more muddled. That actually makes it worse because one of the things I don't like about this is the bolt is not targeting a creature. It's like targeting a door. <laughs> and then the flavor text like doubles down on that. And it's like, well, that's the one thing bolt doesn't target is lands and like but It does say things. any target, Austin. That's true. We've, we've That's got true. battles now, so... Connor, this is going to lead to confused new players thinking they can bolt somebody else's land. They're going to be bolting the lands. They're going to be bolting artifacts. Yeah, they're going to be... Exactly. There, There's that new door to Moria or whatever it's called. 
They're going to try to bolt that. They're going to try to valid target for lightning bolt. They're going to bolt. They're going to bolt cellar door from the original Innistrad. They're going to bolt door to nothingness to try to stop themselves <laughs> losing the game. This is going to so chaos. Our door episode. <laughs> there are 12 doors. Uh, and I believe number. there are one to three that anyone would be interested in. And that, that when I say 12 doors, that's also including doorkeeper, bar the door, kick in the door, ball <laughs> fist door buster, and of course the iconic giant trap door spider from Ice Age. Oh, we, we all love giant trap door spider. He's, he's one of those cards that's kind of locked into my mind. Yeah, into my nightmares. We're really covering a lot of ground here. Anyway, this is an F for me, Connor, uh, although I liked all the door talk. I'm going to give this one a, a D because I do kind of like this setting. Like it, the, the you know, lighting looks e. cool. I'm going the, to E. E, okay. E, E. I feel too punitive Twist. with my F. Sorry, finish your thought. Oh, just, you know, I, I do kind of like the the, the setting of, you know, these, these houses kind of lined up on this narrow pier in a, a choppy sea and the, this gate dividing something from something. <laughs> it's kind of a cool setting, so I won't go full F. It is, although, let me, let me... Let me undermine it again. My own minor rallying towards this card. I'm going to undermine it. The gatehouse is like very digital to me, or it's very like this model was built in Maya and then lit in Maya and then painted over. Am I wrong? Yeah, it does does have that feel. Hmm. Okay. Wow. It's, it's always hard to tell what cards, which, uh, which ones are going to occupy the most words. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have guessed it'd be this one. No. All right. Let's go to Phil Stone's... Uh, Alternate printing for Commander Legend uh, ball, Battle for Baldur's Gate. This one is very fun. I don't have a ton to say about this, but I dig this kind of vintage uh, like TSR D&D style. Um, obviously, the D&D set is a great opportunity to do that. And I think like totally works for me. This is this is just super, super fun to look at. Very like it's actually not even D&D. It's almost with this like strong black and white, big pools of black and big pools of white. It's almost gerpsy if that reference lands for anyone else. Uh, and I, I, I'm here for it. Yeah, I love that. And the the like bright red background that's just sort of the streak of, of paint behind the the wizard casting a whole a whole lot of lightning. There is a lot of lightning bolt going on. So here. much lightning. You are getting zapped by this thing. Yeah, with that that may actually be my least favorite part about this. There's kind of too much lightning. <laughs> but other than that, this this really works for me. I, I think that on a a really simple spell like this. Uh, this showcase style is especially effective. Like the word instant there just between these two black lines, uh, the that little bit of text down in the, you know, this beige field that looks like some old parchment paper, like it, it comes together in this really cool way. Hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I think all of these, uh, yeah, all the ones in this uh, showcase style had this big color wash. Um, like for the red ones, it's all basically the same red pattern. But I think it does work particularly well on this one. Uh, like the u- the way the negative space is used uh, is really effective. For I think for creating kind of sense of motion to it, or not motion, but like uh, I guess like flow of the energy out of her hands. Cool. Yeah, this is a, this is like a B for me. It's not a top tier piece, but I like it. I'll, I'll give it an A. I feel like I've been very generous with A's and very <laughs> parsimonious with S. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll give this another A. Why not? Okay, our final bolt is a bit of a weird one to end on. So this is Chuck Lukacs' piece from Double Masters 2022. A beloved set. Uh, which is one of the most awkward awkward names for a set <laughs> to possibly say out loud. Double Masters 2022. Chuck Lukacs has some really outstanding art dating back to Lorwyn. That seems to have been when uh, he started doing art for magic. And I love a lot of those pieces. And I remember loving them like from the first moment that I saw those cards. But something about that style just is not working for me with this lightning bolt. The There's these rings in the clouds aren't really lining up with a lens flare that's coming from like the top of the lightning bolt. All the clouds here kind of look like lumpy and and wavy in a way that doesn't feel realistic like it's kind of not it's 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 not realistic enough to succeed in that way and it's also not like cartoony enough or stylized enough to succeed that way either yeah it's it's kind of confusing to me honestly like i can't quite tell what's happening in the art here like why why this bolt is originating, where it's going, uh, why it's kind of all gathered around this central point. Like it, it doesn't, um, 
Hmm. It again, doesn't really feel like this is in the process of striking something. It's more like a gathering of energy or something. Like maybe this is before something is struck. Like if this was for, I don't know, like a not quite thousand year storm, but you know, like a something like that, I think it would work a little better. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like lightning bolt to me. They need to just use this for a hundred year storm. A thousand year <laughs> yeah, storm. Is, <laughs> like, yeah, ten, 10 year storm, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Also, I don't know why, but like, you know how they did that Fortnite secret lair drop? Like, if you told me this was from that, I would believe you. And I don't know why. There's just something about, I think it's the gathering clouds and the sort of circular open center and actually the style of it a little bit. Just something about it feels Fortnite-y to me. Maybe that's just because I've been playing a lot of Fortnite, like a lot. Yeah, the, the color scheme kind of feels like the storm uh-huh, in Fortnite uh-huh. too. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Maybe Wizards missed a trick there. Maybe this was cut from the Fortnite secret lair drop. This was supposed to be called the storm. And uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Could, could be, could be. Could be, could be. One other thing I, I want to say about this is the flavor text. So the flavor text, I'll read it. It'll only take a few seconds, is my, how shocking, Baron Talarian Archmage. That is, Ugh. I just think that is an absolute clunker of flavor text. Um, Baron is like an iconic Talarian Archmage. He appears in just a, a kind of ridiculous number of flavor texts, uh, like 34 separate flavor texts. Most of his other things are these sort of ponderous proverbs or like, little academic uh, notes about Urza's education or something. Um, And I can't say any of them are that great. I think a lot of them are pretty overwritten, but none of them are like these like fast and the furious level quips. And I just like, it's not even a joke, Baron. Like, what is this? Why did they, why did they stick this on here? I don't like it. Yeah. This is, this is like the kind of quip where if, if it was in an Avengers movie, I would think, wow, like, these have really fallen off, which they kind of have. But, but yeah, like it's like you could do better. No one was even trying here. Yeah, it's like and anyone can do better than my how shocking. I feel like we should just keep kind of ducking on it because yeah, I feel like it's maybe a Fast and the Furious thing, or it's like live journal fan fiction for an Avengers <laughs> movie. Or um... this is the kind of line that could have been in Troll Two. <laughs> Or, um, there, you know, uh, the other one that makes me think of is what is that WB cartoon from the early 2000s? Um, is his name Shock? He's like Static an electrical suit. Static Shock. This is like something from Static Shock. Like when the writers are like, you know what? I, I'm really done. I'm done writing for this kid's show. I just want to go home. My, how shocking. That's good. That's good enough. We, we got to go, go back and see how many Shock related puns there are in that show. Hmm. You do think we should do a whole season where we just review Static Shock episode by episode? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's right in our wheelhouse. Listener, if you'd like to see us pivot this show to a static shock deep dive, just let us know in the YouTube or Reddit comments. Uh, we didn't really get to rating on this one. What's what's your rating, Connor? So I I gave this one a, a C, but I don't I don't know why. Like maybe maybe the C rating for this just kind of encapsulates my feelings about quite a few of these lightning bolts, which are that they're just kind of there. There's some lightning. Uh, there's some background. It's not bad. It's not great. And and that's just sort of where I end up with it. But C sort of feels too generous. Yeah, I, I'm a D. I took my sort of, I don't have feelings C and rounded it down. Because I think to the extent I have feelings, they're, they're a little more negative on this one. Like it just doesn't, it's not landing for me. It's not working. It, really at almost any level. What do you say? It's uh, not striking you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. Uh, yes, I would say that. Um, before we move off of this art slash uh, the television program Static Shock, I just looked it up on Wikipedia. Are you ready for this? I, I don't know what I'm ready for, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just to quote from Wikipedia, the show approached several social issues, which was positively received by most television critics. Some criticism was directed towards its humor, which were said to be stale and too similar to Spider-Man. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the Spider Man part, but the stale? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh oh. That sounds shocking. That sounds shocking. All right, Connor, we've uh, we've been concluding these uh, art review episodes with each of us just talking about which one of these bolts we would run in our cube. So I know your cube is like, you know, very recent magic. It doesn't probably have room for lightning bolt. But if you were to cube just one of these bolts, which one would it be? Oh, boy. It's tough. I feel like I, I sort of knew instinctively with Counterspell and Dark Ritual which one I would want to have. These are tougher. (sighs) Even my strong reactions, I have trouble like sorting out my feelings. There's something about these bolts that just leaves me a little bit muddied compared to counterspell and ritual. Yeah, I just I'm I'm having trouble sort of picturing wanting to draft any of them. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it's just that the you know the 2010 lightning bolt is just so 
implanted in my mind as the lightning bolt that that's sort of the only one I could picture having in there. And it's also, aside from the this Baldur's Gate lightning bolt that we don't want to talk about, 2010 lightning bolt is the only one that's been printed in you know what's close to the most modern frame. Uh, everything else is you know a full art or a secret layer drop or mystical archives or some other you know sort of showcase style thing. So all of, all of that delaying to say I would probably just go for the Magic Fest 2019 Kekai Kotaki Lightning Bolt. Whoa, that is a curveball ending to this. What what would what would have been your guess for which one I'd pick? I mean, probably the one you spent like four minutes talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was just all. That's all a setup. Um, I, I'll I'll take your setup and your bait. For me, it's it's the M10 one. That's the one I cube already. And honestly, even though there are pieces in here where I maybe liked the art more, maybe a number of them, like uh, the Bridget Broca one, um, the Alexis Zirit one, the Ezoi uh, Japanese Mystical Archive, maybe even the Phil Stone one i think like to me this is just bolt and it might still do the best of all these at just capturing what lightning bolt is and does and i think i think i'll just stick with it i I don't know that i want to switch all right fair enough all right unless anyone wants to gift me an original alpha printing of lightning bolt valued at 650 dollars, in which case i will totally run that and thank you what an offer And if you do, I've I've made this offer before. It still stands. We still got a few left. If anyone would like a foil Graxaplon mailed to you for free, uh, just write the show, clockspinningpodcast at gmail.com. And if you want it in exchange, send me an alpha bolt. I'll allow it. My, how shocking. It's the end of the episode. Thanks so much for listening. Um, you can follow the show on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Uh, we try to release an episode every two weeks, but it's been three weeks as I record this. So it can be a little bit intermittent and that's a good way to make sure you don't miss all of our exciting content like this Gideon episode that I think we have to do now, Connor. I think we're fully committed to it. In the meantime, if you liked this, like it on YouTube, share it with a magic playing friend or in a Discord chat, comment on YouTube or Reddit. All those things mean a lot. We care a lot about this topic. We put a lot in the show and it means a lot to hear from all of you. You can always let us know your thoughts. What is the best lightning bolt art? Did we get it wrong? By comment or email us, clockspinningpodcast uh, at gmail.com. Join us next time for probably some more Kamigawa unless we just can't get this Gideon uh, brainworm out of our brains. But until then, I'm Austin. And I'm Connor. Thanks so much for listening.